Thanks for watching. You're watching Panorama News uh, live here on Live TV International. I'm Tagherit Hussein, and here are the main headlines of the day. Egyptians vote for the second day in the parliamentary elections. The High Elections Committee to declare results of expats' vote. And Brussels remains on lockdown for the third day as search continues for Paris suspects. Welcome back. The polling stations opened for the second day on Monday in Cairo and 12 other governorates for the second stage of the parliamentary elections. Voting takes place between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Monday is the second and the final day of the voting with the run of rounds scheduled between November 30th and the 2nd of December. The voting abroad was concluded on Sunday night. A number of 222 individual seats are contested by hundreds of candidates in the second round. For party lists, there is a total of 60 seats in two constituencies in Cairo and the Nile Delta. A total of 160,000 army personnel were deployed to secure the polling stations in 13 governorates in which the second stage of the parliamentary elections take place. The 13 governorates voting are Cairo, Qalyubeya, Monofeya, Sharqiya, Garbiya, Kafr al-Sheikh, Damieta, Port Said, Ismailiya, Suez, north and south of Sinai. Prime Minister Sharif Ismail announced that Monday will be a half day off for state employees to allow them to vote in the second stage of the parliamentary elections. The Prime Minister has called on the private sector to give its employees a chance in order to perform their constitutional right. And updating us more from the Higher Electoral Commission, we have with us our correspondent, Abir Mitwelli. Abir, good day. We just had the press conference on behalf of the spokesman. Tell us more about the main highlights that came in the press conference. Abir. Abir? Can you hear me? Yes, dear. Uh, we're talking about the press conference that was just held. Tell us yes, more yes, about, about the main the highlights, Abir. The HEC just held the, its press conference uh, today. Uh, uh, the uh, judge said that the delay in the opening of 24 point stations took place. There is also five judges have been changed, four of them due to health conditions. Uh, some violations were reported that was a candidate and his sister were clashing with the voters. Uh, also, uh, they received a number of complaints, about 75 complaints so far. Uh, the, for, talking about the Egyptian expats, about 37,100 voters uh, had cast their ballots so far. Right. Okay, uh, uh, Abir, uh, are we expecting further uh, important live press conferences throughout the day? Yes, uh, there is another press conference to be held uh, at 9 p.m. Uh, this night. Well, thank you very much, uh, Abir Mitwelli, uh, our correspondent at the Higher Electoral Commission. Uh, will keep us updated uh, on more uh, taking place from over there. Deputy Foreign Minister Ambassador Hamdi Louza said that more than 37,000 Egyptian expats voted in the second phase of the parliamentary elections. He said the number represents a 22% increase in the turnout than the first phase. Egyptians voted Saturday and Sunday in 139 embassies and consulates. The High Elections Committee is yet to announce results of the vote. And a number of domestic and international observers have been monitoring the voting process of the 2015 parliamentary elections in a number of polling stations in the governorate of Port Said. Observers praised the organization of the security measures taken throughout the governorate and reported that there have been no violations in any of the polling stations that they have visited. Nile TV's Linda Abdelatif conducted the following an interview with the international observer from the Global Network for Rights and Development. 
We're right now in Eshtumi Gamil School in Port Said Governorate, where we've been witnessing how the voting process has been going in Port Said Governorate. Now, to update us more on the observing process of the 2015 parliamentary elections, I'm being joined right now by an international observer who is Numan Balazzi from the Global Network for Rights. And, sir, thank you so much for being with us today in Altavi International. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here with you. So let me introduce myself very quickly. I'm Mr. Baltasi from GNRD Geneva, representing GNRD Geneva here. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank you, the official Zezimjian official, to give us this opportunity to come here and observe the election. Now let's sort of first about, uh, or let's speak about the voting process and how has it been going so far in the different polling stations that you've been visiting in Port Said government. Okay, thank you very much for this question, by the way. So we are here to observe the election, to observe the process. Uh, till now, we didn't see any mistakes. I mean, the, the team, including the judge, the member staff, were very professional. Uh, people who are coming voting, they, uh, they are very professional as well. They are well educated. Everything uh, is working very perfectly. What about the organization and the security measures that you've seen in the different polling stations that you've been visiting today and yesterday as well? Yes, this kind of question is part of my checklist. So uh, we, we take note of everything. The security is very good. The, the guards are very uh, well formed. When we show, for example, our badges, they recognize immediately that we are an international uh, observers through the colors or the names and things like that. So very well educated and uh, the, it's, the, the area is very well secured. What are the other points that are on your checklist as well? It's, we have two parts, outside polling centers and inside polling stations. So. Outside, we are checking the, the ambience, if people are, I don't know, if, if they are in a good mood, for example, if the security guard are present on the, on the field. And inside, we are checking if, for example, ballot boxes are transparency, if the judge is here, if the member, uh, staff members are here as well. So, uh, but we ha we, there is no mistakes. Everything uh, is working very well, and we are very happy to, 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 to be part of this successful process. Now, you've mentioned earlier before we record this interview that you've been also observing a polling station in Giza or a number of polling stations in the governorate of Giza. What are the differences between both governorates? Exactly. So um, I went to Giza for my part. We, we are working always two international observers with uh, one translator. We went to Giza for the yes, uh, yesterday, yes. And the thing is, uh, in Giza, not yesterday, sorry, a few weeks ago, uh, yes, and the participation rate was very low, really very low, and this time the participation, it's not very high, but compared to, to Giza, to Governor Giza, the participation is very interesting. We saw elder people coming voting, women co uh, coming voting, but unfortunately young people are not investing themselves. They did not take this opportunity to come and vote and took uh, responsibility for the future of their country. We hope that they will be voting and coming in the, uh, yes. in the coming few hours. We asked this question to the judge, why young people were not coming? And they just advised, few of them advised us that there is no workshop. Yeah, I mean, useful workshop for young people. We need to train them, we need to explain them the program of each uh, candidates. And unfortunately, the people are not doing this kind of job. And that's why young people are not investing themselves by coming here and voting. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being with us today in Altavin. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri held a number of meetings on Monday with the South Korean officials during his visit to Seoul. During his meeting with head of the Foreign Relations Committee in Parliament, Shukri discussed boosting bilateral relations. The visit comes as South Korea and Egypt mark the 20th anniversary for establishing diplomatic relations. During his visit, Shukri reiterated Egypt's keenness on boosting economic cooperation with Seoul. The foreign minister's visit is part of preparations for pr the president's visit to South Korea. Shukri kicked off an Asian tour on Sunday that includes South Korea and Japan for talks on political and economic relations. In Japan, Shukri will meet with officials from the Japanese Agency for International Cooperation and the Bank of Japan. Brussels was on terror lockdown on Monday in fear of a Paris-style attack with a gunman wanted over the deadly rampage 
in the French capital a week ago still on the run. The Belgian capital closed its participation. How about the turnout so far in the second day of the parliamentary elections this phase? Yes, uh, just let me wrap up the situation here. Uh, since the early morning, we've seen uh, some of uh, um, turn out, not uh, uh, like yesterday, but it's moderate and still people are coming. Uh, since 2.30 in the afternoon till uh, uh, up till this minute and um, uh, until 3.30, there is a break. Uh, if we speak about uh, the whole uh, process, the atmosphere of the election in itself is going in a very smooth way where uh, the security situation here is on its uh, utmost alert. Um, of course, elders in the very morning came uh, and middle-aged came before the working times. Now in the afternoon, we are supposed to be expecting more participation from the youths and uh, the middle-aged uh, uh, men since we are speaking about a half uh, working day. And uh, so we'll be awaiting. Tagreed. Yeah. Uh, Mona, uh, throughout the day, uh, how about the, the, the turnout definitely is, uh, is, is better this phase than the, 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 the phase before. But, but how about uh, more of the participation of, of the youth, of women? Uh, we, we see the elderly dominating the scene more. Yes. Um, the participation, uh, particularly in Saida Zinab, is, uh, I guess, more than uh, than you can find in any other constituencies and i can tell you this because it's a popular area when we spoke to some of the uh, voters and asked them uh, why they are participating and are they aware of how important the parliamentary elections is for uh, egyptians they said that they are very much aware and this is why they came some of them were not uh, even able to walk mm -hmm. and they were uh, helped by the police forces uh, through the wheelchair and other facilities. One of the judges came down uh, even for one of them who, were, who was not able to uh, go through the stairs. Right. Uh, all these were facilities. But um, uh, I have also the chance to speak with one of the observers, particularly from one of the embassies. And when I and my colleagues, we asked him why is it important for him to observe the parliamentary elections in Egypt. He said it's not important the turnout, whether it's high or it's low. What is important that uh, they want to see if Egyptians are very much aware of the political uh, um, scene and if it is going on and uh, how they view their future and the importance uh, for the the importance uh, for them from the parliamentary elections is that they see Egypt in a stable uh, situation and this is why the parliamentary elections for them is important Tahrir. right uh, it's glad Mona that you pinpointed the issue of the Egyptians awareness uh, for participation in the elections and also in in such popular districts like uh, Sayyida Zainab where people usually know each other so I guess the the criteria is further uh, facilitated on who they are going to give their voice to right right very much indeed Tagrid. Sayyida Zainab you know is one of the very uh, oldest areas particularly uh, on the political map since you know that most of uh, or, or, or lots of the uh, important political parties initiated from Sayyida Zainab. It is very much important because also it reflects the, po uh, the popular will of people. Right. So that all uh, uh, is a reason for its importance. It, Sayyida Zainab is a middle-sized constituency if we're speaking about uh, 17 polling stations, if we're speaking about a capacity of 196,000 people who are the uh, illegitimate voters or eligible uh, uh, voters. This is the percentage of Sayyida Zainab. But the importance come of uh, how uh, uh, it is uh, an important popular area in Egypt. Right, and also a sense of keenness to participate themselves reflects the awareness of Egyptians. Thank you very much, Mona Musilhi, our correspondent at Sayyida Zainab constituency for your feedback. Uh, we are going to continue to monitor with you.
And still following up on the beat of the elections, uh, the parliamentary elections 2015, a very important landmark in Egypt's roadmap. And we have with us right now from the premises of the Ministry of Interior, correspondent Dina Hwaidak. Dina, good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon, Tagreed. Well, uh, how is it going? How about the report of uh, the Ministry of Interior? So far, the situation is going on smoothly, right? Uh, yeah, we're still here at Ministry of Interior following the parliamentary elections of 2015 and the second day of the second phase. And I'm still joined by Major Ahmed Haider from the International Relations here at the Ministry of uh, Interior to uh, tell us about the latest updates and security concerns. Good afternoon, Major Ahmed. Good afternoon, Dina. Uh, please tell us about the latest developments. Uh, actually, we, st we are still witnessing um, an uneventful day, um, a voting process uh, that is uh, characterized by uh, stability and the calmness. Uh, the, the presence of police uh, forces supported by uh, the army ensure uh, a, fair and, uh, um, a fair and free elections in a peaceful uh, climate and environment. Uh, and actually, the, the, the Ministry of Interior reiterate re uh, uh, that uh, uh, the, um, the impartiality of uh, police forces uh, during maintaining security in the electoral process. Uh, we're still in the midday uh, of the second day of uh, the elections. Uh, can you please tell us if there is any violations till now? Uh, to tell now, we, we, did, we have not uh, uh, received any reports about uh, new violations other than uh, the, the, that happened uh, yesterday, uh, con uh, such as uh, uh, taking pictures for uh, voting pallets or uh, uh, collecting pallets in return for money. Uh, but uh, uh, till now, we didn't receive any reports concerning any violations. Okay, speaking about uh, violations, is there any illegal uh, campaigning outside the schools? Uh, that's what we call it, these uh, administrative uh, violations, uh, and also uh, the, the police forces responded to these kind of uh, violations upon the request of uh, the judge that is uh, supervising the uh, polling stations. Uh, but uh, till now, uh, the uh, electioneering of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the persons who are uh, participating in uh, this uh, process, uh, uh, there is no uh, recorded uh, cases of that. Uh, can you please remind us again uh, about the consequence of any violation that might occur in the day? Um, as I told you, there is a, a high alert uh, in the Ministry of Interior and police forces are in a full readiness to respond to any kind of violations firmly. Uh, and uh, till now, uh, everything is okay and uh, we urge the citizen to feel free and to go to practice his uh, constitutional right and uh, cast his vote. Yeah. How, and how, what about the cooperation yeah. between the armed forces and the police uh, forces? Uh, there is uh, a, a fully co coordination between the armed forces and uh, police forces. Actually, uh, the, we are supported by uh, uh, a big number of uh, personnel uh, from the armed forces uh, for taking the security measures concerning the electoral process. Uh, thank you, Major Ahmed, uh, for joining us on Nile TV. Uh, back to you, Tagreed. Those were the updates May we got so Major far Ahmed from the Ministry of Interior. Those were Dina Hwaidak reporting for Nile TV. Thank you, Dina Hwaidak from the Ministry of Interior. I was to inquire more concerning how far are uh, citizens actually cooperating with the people of the police? How far are they aware of uh, uh, how to report any sense of violations? Uh, Tagreed, can you repeat the questions yeah. again? How far are the citizens themselves cooperating in reporting any sense of violations? Uh, we're counting on the awareness of Egyptians in that respect. Dina. I guess we, Tagreed, we, I cannot we're hear losing you. the line. Okay, thank you so much, Dina Huaydaq, our uh, correspondent at the Ministry of Interior. Uh, reporting for Night TV International on more uh, on how the situation is going on like smoothly uh, throughout the day, whether there are any sense. Uh -huh. Basma is in the Sayyida Zainab district. Basma, we earlier talked to our colleague Mona Musalhi also in the Sayyida Zainab and she mentioned that the situation is going on, the process going on smoothly. The elderly were very much keen to take part. So uh, she also talked about the awareness of the citizens at Sayyida Zainab. What more? Good afternoon, Tagreed. I am now at Al Bahia School in Al Sayyida Zainab. As you can see behind me right now, uh, the break time uh, ends and voters started. It ends at 3:30 p. 
p.m. and voters started to uh, head to their polling stations uh, to cast uh, their votes. Uh, the turnout now uh, or today you can say it is moderate but I believe that it will increase in the coming hours as you know Prime Minister Shrif Ismail announced that today will be a half uh, day, uh, a half work day so uh, voters would be a able to come and cast uh, their votes. Uh, Tagrid, uh, so far uh, uh, the uh, voting, uh, the, uh, everything here is well organized and everything is going smoothly. It took between two or three minutes for each voter to cast his vote and uh, to go through the whole uh, voting uh, process. Also Tagrid, as you can see behind me, heavy security measures are taken uh, to protect the voting stations and the surrounding areas. I can see heavy deployment from the security forces uh, everywhere so uh, voters would feel free and secure at the same time. The read that better health and education of course are top priorities from most of the voters. They believe that uh, the coming parliament is very significant and it comes at a very critical time in the history uh, of Egypt. They need candidates from uh, uh, the younger generation who uh, can uh, lead to a better and flourishing future for uh, Egypt. Also, uh, they believe that uh, the younger generation can build a flourishing future for Egypt amid the various uh, challenges uh, facing our country. Tarid also, it is really great to see the old, uh, the elderly, uh, elderly coming uh, today to cast their votes, uh, leaning on walking sticks for the sake of their grandchildren. Uh, Right. Yeah, great to see that different categories are participating, especially the elderly and also what you pinpointed, Besma, concerning the sense of awareness of Egyptians. How about uh, uh, talking to the voters concerning the criteria uh, of their choice? Do they know quite well, do they read quite well uh, the candidates that they are voting for? Tagrid, I can't hear you well, but uh, I think you're asking about the violations. Uh, as I said, uh, here everything is going uh, smoothly. Indeed, the security forces are exerting their utmost efforts in order to facilitate everything to the voters. So, no far, uh, so far, Tagrid, no violations uh, committed and no complaints received. Tagrid. Thank you so much, uh, Basma Taha, uh, our correspondent at Sayyida Zainab uh, District, uh, for updating us on the beat of the electoral process. Uh, a short break, and we'll be continuing our panorama and also our uh, expanded review of the electoral process, the beat of the elections taking place uh, from the different uh, governorates participating in the, this uh, phase of Egypt's parliamentary elections. Stay with us, we'll be back. With us now live, our correspondent Riham Morsi, who is currently in Shobra district from a polling station there. Riham, how is the electoral process going there in Shobra right now? Uh, well, uh, right now uh, we can see a large flow of people coming in uh, because the doors were closed for an hour's break. Uh, for the polling stations themselves, uh, people were obviously uh, uh, lining up outside the school, uh, waiting their turn to come in. So this is why we saw a big flow of people coming into the schools themselves to vote. In fact, uh, if, if you can see, uh, I'm sure the director here is going to cut to the different polling stations within the school itself. Uh, they're going to show you people there. Uh, queuing up in front of the polling stations uh, to vote in addition to the people coming in through the door right now. Mm. Um, we should start to see a big flow of people coming in for the next hour or so. It might calm down a bit later on and then increase again at around 7 p.m. Uh, there's one important thing that I need to do tell you about it. Um, earlier I observed uh, one of the candidates here uh, with his uh, monitors that were here to observe the elections. Uh, he, he was sat inside the school vicinity itself, which is considered the polling station's vicinity. Uh, he had like some sort of little meeting with them uh, to discuss the electoral process itself. In addition to the uh, monitors talking to the voters, asking them who they voted for, uh, and uh, this is obviously I illegal and it's an irregularity. I, I went and uh, contacted the head of the army security who immediately went and removed the candidate and his observers out of uh, the uh, school vicinity itself um, and uh, wrote a report about it um, noting that there were irregularities happening here. Clearly this is an indication that there are some irregularities happen happening in uh, Shubra 
and obviously the candidates are trying to coax uh, the voters into voting but fortunately the army w took immediate action towards this and removed them out of the vicinity of the polling stations. Okay, Riham Morsi from Shobra, thank you very much for the update and we'll be expecting more updates from you throughout the day. Thank you very much. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this edition of Panorama News. I'm Halal Hamalawi. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be updating you minute by minute regarding the uh, latest updates of the second day of the second phase of uh, Egypt's parliamentary elections. Stay tuned to NAL TV International.